All right, here we are. How are you, Mila? I am so good. So good. How are you? I am great. I have uh, been enjoying the time home with my family and trying to, you know, be as get as much time in with them as possible here. And um, I'm actually in my son Carter's room. He has the best backdrop uh, in the house. So um, we redid I'll his love room. That. <laughs> So he's got the Virginia room in full effect here. So a lot of, lot of spirit, but yeah, it's been. I'm jealous. Mine is just straight yellow and that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you been up to? Uh, what's been it. going on? Definitely. Yeah. So summer plans have changed due to recent events, pandemic, but I have been occupying myself with two internships, um, a sales internship. And I've also been uh, working a lot with my team with a new CIO called Boss, which is Black Student Athletes Offering Service and Support. And we have been planning um, for the upcoming fall and working really hard, honestly. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, how, much, how much do you miss being, being with your team and, and being on grounds and everything yeah oh my gosh I miss it so I miss my team so much but I've been lucky enough to um, meet with them we've been meeting uh every maybe every, twice a week um and we've it, it doesn't even matter that we're not meeting in person or not because I feel like we're still bonding even through zoom and we still have these awesome conversations and are trying to um get better honestly every day volleyball IQ even though we can't be there in practice you know we can still be watching film and talking about this kind of stuff so it's been very positive and I miss them so much even being in the gym mem gym especially all right well let's get let's get right into it I'm going to share the screen here and I'm sure we will talk about mem gym uh, so all right here we go now I, I'll just start. I, I love shooting volleyball just because, I mean, the reactions, the, the celebrations are uh, my favorite thing in all sports to shoot. And volleyball certainly allows a ton of that. So just tell me a little bit about that. Like, what's it, what's it like after a big point to come together? Yeah, definitely. Well, I know one of the things that we do in like volleyball culture when we play is we celebrate every point. doesn't matter if it's big, doesn't matter if it's small. We always come together after every single point to the center, right? Even if right. we lose the point we together, regroup and we say, Hey, let's get this next point. We motivate each other. And I think that it honestly makes a big difference in our games is having that kind of culture for it. Cause it's, you know what, like volleyball is the ultimate, one of the ultimate team sports. You can't, you can't contact the ball more than twice. You can only hit it once. And if you don't have that amazing communication, um, you know, from your teammates, it's going to be hard to play and be successful. Now this is, this is one of my favorite ones of you right here. Uh, this must, this had to have been after a block, <laughs> right? Yep. No, not today. <laughs> I do do that. <laughs> what do you get more excited for a block or a kill? What's uh Mm. Yeah. If I had to choose, my position is middle blocker. So if I had to choose, I think I would choose blocking every single time because there's no better feeling than, you know, stuffing someone from the other team and, you know, keeping them from scoring that point. You think they think that they're going to score. The whole purpose of hitting is you know, you're going to score and put this ball down. But when you put it back in their their side of the court and back in their face, it's like, yeah, not today. This is my court, and that's what I do. Not today, not on court type deal. <laughs> that's like, I, I mean, this is probably way – Dikembe Mutombo from the NBA. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that, I love that shot of you. Um, and then uh, let's see, let's go here. I, I don't know what was happening here, and I'm not even sure what you guys are doing. But uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So we were, um, I think we were joking about how um, some of the girls. We were all like, let's, or we saw this music video that had recently come out, and it's like um, K-pop, right? And it was like on YouTube. And one of the things from like 
um, like K-pop culture was you do these like little hearts. They're supposed to be little hearts. And we were like, oh my gosh, we should take this opportunity and do like little hearts towards Matt Riley. <laughs> and that's honestly what it was. It was totally random because we thought it would be so funny. <laughs> and you can tell that some of the girls are like, I don't know what this is, but we're going to do it anyways. <laughs> so that's what it was. All right. Aaron Smith. Does Aaron Smith have a, have a say? Can you, do you have a good Aaron Smith impression? A good Aaron Smith, yes. <laughs> so we call him Smitty. Um, and one of the things that we used to make fun of him for doing was um, after some, we would like, we would, we would be after game play, play or, or no, right before games, we would go over our film and he would be like, all right, let's do this. And uh, somebody would say something and he'd say, cool. Like, cool. And we're like, oh my gosh, like, Smitty, it's cool. 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 But nope, that's not it. <laughs> so he says, cool. And it's so, it's so funny. And we all make fun of him for it. So that's one of his sayings, I know. All right. I've got a, I've got a challenge for you this season. So after a big oh play, after a big play, I want you to go over and like chest bump Smitty. You got to get, he's got to get a little more, uh, <laughs> Probably knock him over because you won't be prepared for it. <laughs> I uh, would probably like knock him out Run, running in. Oh my gosh. I love Aaron, but I he he's just so like stoic over on the sideline. You need to like get get some Oh definitely. Go over and get him to yell. <laughs> I don't know. I I would that would be the challenge. That would be the challenge. Very composed, very, very composed coach. Yes, definitely. All right, who who is the uh, who's the best celebrator on the team, or who's the craziest celebrator? I would have to say Maddie Matthews. She's a rising second year now, and she's the other middle opposite of me. She gets the energy going. I'm just not like the celebrations. I feel like you catch are always lucky, right? Are always lucky because I just like I celebrate, but it's like one and done. Okay, next point. Like, we're going to get this next point. I always reset so quickly. But with um, celebrations, Maddie Matthews, she goes all out, and she brings the energy to the court, on the court, the court. Absolutely infectious. All right. Now, you said you look for Matt Riley. You know what? <laughs> I do do that. <laughs> I'm like, okay, where's Matt now? <laughs> Where is he? I always, I always bring it to you every time. That one time, that was me. That was me. <laughs> well, you know, I'm usually up on the track, so. Definitely. Uh, let's, let's talk about Mim Jim a little bit. Talk about the, like, when that place is packed, I mean, it is unbelievable. Right. Right. I think one opportunity that we have that no other gym has is that we, like, the fees are close. Like, everything is in close proximity. Sometimes it's not good because it all flies all around, but... It is such a awesome like atmosphere, infectious atmosphere, and to feel like all those people so close when you're playing, it's it's totally amazing. Like it's unreal, and it's like unlike any other gym that I've had the opportunity to play in. So Mem Gym is awesome. I love Mem Gym, <laughs> and the close proximity of the crowds and hearing people cheer, and you know we have our um, own gym um, um, culture in which you know everybody stands up on that set point one finger up and it's it's just like amazing to see so love mem yeah, it's just such a cool like historic old like cool looking building too so yeah yeah and i think we're also lucky i i came in right when they were installing ac because if you remember it didn't used to have ac before it was hot hot oh, hot okay. I did a photo shoot. <laughs> you said I never forgot. <laughs> yeah, there was one year. It was probably my, I'd probably been there two or three years. And we did a photo shoot with the, the seniors for like the cover of the media guide or the poster. And it, it was so hot in there. Like I was sweating so much. Like and I was like trying. Yeah. To, I remember like I was on my knees on the ground and like I couldn't even stay because it was so slippery, like on the wood. It was just like, oh, so hot. But yeah, yeah. The air, the air conditioning. I know in the past is clutch. Yeah, definitely. I know in the past they used to practice maybe at like slaughter gym during the summers because it was just on too unbearably hot in there. 
So. All right. Let's just talk about like before a point, like talk about like what goes through your mind. What is, what is, what is the focus and what are you, what, do, what, what is, what do you do to, uh, to focus in before a point or before a match? Even? Definitely. Definitely. So I think one of the best things I do is, so as a middle blocker, you're the captain of the front row. So I communicate with my, um, my, the two teammates in the front row. And I also use hand signals for the people in the back row. Um, to tell them what I'm going to do, for example. So if I know that the strongest outside is on the outside, then I say, oh, I'm committing and I'm going to go block them. This person, you'll have only one blocker on the outside or the right side. So I'm communicating at this time with my players. And then that also helps me focus, okay, what am I going to do? What's my next steps? How am I going to get this next point and defend um, for my side? So that's what I'm doing. How about before a match? How do you get locked in or pumped up? What 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 what's your pre-match ritual? Definitely. So I always think that I'm so like when I go into a match, when I'm warming up even and you know doing hitting lines and stuff, I always think I'm the biggest player on the court. That works for me. I think I'm the biggest and best player on this court, and that's what's gonna like this is what I'm gonna do to prepare. I do all my stretches on the sidelines and then I try and you know, when we do hitting lines, show off a bit because <laughs> I feel like that helps me warm up and mentally prepare. If I can do this here and right now, I can also do this here right now in a game. So mentally preparing myself, saying I'm the biggest big kid on the court and this is how I'm going to perform during the game. All right, let's go. Let's talk about, all right, after a win, what's it like to sing the good old song? Like, uh, to, Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love doing the good old song. So we also do that um, when we lose as well. And I honestly think that like to know that even though we win or lose, like we do this, the good old song at the end, uh, it honestly means a lot because I know that there's a community behind me that supports me and a community behind my team that supports my team. So I honestly think that it's one of the most amazing things that we can do, especially to promote the UBA culture. So I love it. And this is your team impact girl right here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Ada, yeah. So this was, I think, I don't know if this was one of our first good old songs, but we love incorporating Ada in a lot of our um, stuff because, like I said, we have such an amazing community, not just behind the volleyball team, but also um, the UVA community, Charlottesville community. And I think that incorporating it with Ada, like I, I love that she's a part of this. So to show that kind of support for her is awesome. And I know you're super involved in that and, and a lot of things like boss, like you said. A lot just, of things. <laughs> just, I mean, and I, I had to put this cause this is my son here. I just, just kind of talk about giving back and, and being involved and that sort of thing. Right, yeah. So I know that like in my first year I didn't exactly know how to start and get involved. And my first year was hard. It was hard being away from home, from Florida, being away from my family. And I thought, okay, what can I do to help me maybe feel a little bit better? And then not only just like help myself, but help the others, like others from my new community, basically, and kind of get a little bit more involved because I, I was lacking community. I felt like, okay, I miss my family. What else can I do with my new second family? So I thought one of the best things I could do was uh, basically get more involved. And that was for me doing these camps, these, these other opportunities with Team Impact. Like you mentioned with Ada, we have um, a new teammate basically, right? Um, and doing boss and outreach to our community. So I absolutely love it. And I feel like a lot of student athletes may miss out on it because they don't know how to start. And it's really hard. It's really hard. I won't lie. It's really hard to do athletics and, you know, be a student. And then on top of that, do community service and do service. But once you learn how to manage and, you know, you figure out maybe that's something I love to do, then it should be, it's not hard, right? It just takes planning, time management. Okay. That, that leads in, in up to here. So time management, being a college athlete, it's a grind. I've been fortunate that you guys have played at Louisville. The last two times the football team has played at Louisville. So I've been there. So I've been able to go. I know. 
yeah, road, <laughs> road volleyball photos don't happen very often, right? Um, but right. let's talk a little bit more about that time management and the grind of, um, you know, going on the road and playing two matches in a weekend. And keep it it's, it's really, I won't even say that I am a pro. I can't even say that I'm a pro, even after two seasons of playing. It just honestly just takes, like you said, grind and getting the work done because it's a lot. It is a lot to do, um, not only like focusing on your academics, but then also you have to maintain your body. You have to maintain your sleep. There's so much nutrition, all this stuff. So for me, I found that my method was best like uh, using like Google calendars and then plugging everything into my phone. And I'm like using Teamworks. I'm like, different schedules all the time. Like tune into this one. Okay, that one's done. Tune into this one. It's done. This one. So it's definitely a grind, but I'm hoping in this upcoming year, I will be mo the, my most efficient than that I've ever been. I'm really excited. Do you have a favorite uh, road venue to play in or favorite road trip to mm -hmm. go on? I would have to say, I think it's, it's Virginia Tech. <laughs> it's always Virginia Tech, of course. Our rivals. Um, either, yeah, yeah. Virginia Tech is my favorite because, of course, they're our rivals. And I think the last time we played them was our very, very last game. The whole football team was in the stands. They invited the football team. We beat Tech, and then, like, three days later, our football team beat Tech uh, for the championship. So it was such an amazing experience. Yeah, has, there been a, has there been a road trip like the – like, just, like, what's the toughest one? Like, the toughest, longest one that you guys have been on? Ah, oh, the toughest and longest one. I would have to say Pitt. We use, I think the last time we've gone, we've or so far, every time that we've got, went, up, went up to Pitt, um, it's been either A, it's super, super cold, and B, we would have to drive. We would bus. So that, it's like, I don't even remember how long it was. It was like nine hours or something. I just remember being at bus, it being super cold. It's like in the mid, like we came in at like, 2 a.m. in the morning or 1 a.m. in the morning and then I'd have to get up for class the next morning for like 8 a.m. and I was just like oh my god this is the worst I don't like going to pit. <laughs> so back before before I came to Virginia I was a I was a I went to school at Marshall and I was the volleyball SID and when I was in grad school there and we had some road trips I mean we were in Conference USA and some of those bus trips were just <laughs> brutal. Like, right brutal there was Absolutely one we were, like, i believe it was in northern illinois and from marshall it's like a 14 hour just brutal drive um yeah and we're like we don't want to stop because we just want to get home and just be done go to sleep yeah uh, we had my worst one <laughs> getting a little off track here but we played it was during, it was, I was there in 2005 and 2006, so it was after Hurricane Katrina. Mm. And we had a match at Southern Miss, and it was like just a few oh weeks gosh. after. So we flew into New Orleans on the first day that the New Orleans airport had reopened. And it was just crazy. And then we had to bus over through all of this stuff. And then and after that, we had to go to Central Florida to play. And half the team, there was like a change in our flight. And we were in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And our it's like three in the morning and our assistant coach is knocking on everybody's door. Our flight got moved up. We got to get to New Orleans. So we're like flying down, like driving as fast as we can to get to New Orleans. And we get there and there's only so many seats. So the head coach and the starters went on the plane and the rest of them. Wow. We're stuck in the New Orleans airport for like 18 hours. I can't even imagine. <laughs> it was, I can't even imagine. So, you know, they were, they got to, they got to Orlando and they were just hanging out by the pool and the rest of us were just stuck in. We did make it for the match. We made it like with a little bit of time to spare before the match started, but that was my craziest uh, road trip in, in my volleyballing time. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, no. Okay. Not good. 
All right, let's switch gears here. Let's talk about let's talk about the final four. <laughs> so how, tell me, how did this how did it all come about? Like, sure, <clears throat> yeah. So it actually, I was actually on my way. I was about to leave to go home, go back to dorms, and um, my coach Smitty called me. He was like, "Hey, like." I don't know if you're good or not, but I know you like to sing, but here's a really cool opportunity you're interested in. It's like the NCAA is looking for, you know, um, someone to sing the, at the final four. And um, I was in, I wanted to know if you were interested. I was like, is it free? Do I have to pay? Like, is it, do I, <laughs> and he's like, yeah, yeah. Like you can, they're going to pay for everything. All expenses paid. So I literally the same day I sent in, like, I was at the, like at the bottom of JPJ because I was in stud hall and I just walked out um, into one of the holiday uh, hallways and I was, I took this video of um, admission basically and I sent it and they called me literally like three minutes later. I was like, Hey, like, would you like to commit to this? We're going to fly you, fly you out in like three days. And I was like, uh, yeah, I'm interested. Yeah. Thank you. He said, okay, we're scheduling you like a flight and you'll fly in three days for, you know, the final four. And then I, like, I, I was like, oh my God, like, wait a second. Is this, is this real? <laughs> is this real? Like, is this serious? I, I told my coaches and they said, yeah, like, it's totally like, all right. We're in off season. Um, you can go. Um, I called my parents and they were super ecstatic and they called me back an hour later and they were like, Hey, like, like, you know, you said all this stuff, but is this real? Like, are you kidding? Are you being serious? And I was like, what do you mean? You know, cause today's April fools. Uh, it was on April. And they're like, yeah, you know, April fools. I was like, mom, you know, I can't even come up with like a prank or a joke like that. I wouldn't, <laughs> I, I couldn't, that's really creative. I'm just saying yeah. to say that I'm going to sing the national anthem at the five four. That's a really creative like, mom. Come on. So it's all, it all went down and I flew out like again, three days later, and we practiced for maybe like four hours, and they said, okay, great, see you guys tomorrow, and I was like, oh, that's it, that's it, okay, wow. so, yeah. Did you get to stay for the championship, or are you just there for the final four game? No, just, just for the, se I think it was for the semis, I think for the uh, finals, they had a military, um, um, somebody from the military do saxophone, and it was really, really cool. Really amazing rendition. But did you get to stay and watch the final, the championship game, or did you have to go home? I couldn't. I had school. I couldn't miss my classes. Oh. <laughs> I really wanted to. I stayed for the semis. I stayed for the night that I was there, and I had courtside seats, but then I was like, you know what, like, Hey, like I was with the other three um, student athletes that sang. I said, Hey, listen guys, like I'm going to go stand with my, um, my, the fans over there, like the who's the students. Cause I knew some of them. And then I was like, yeah, I want to be with my community. Right now, so I'm just going to go with my people. Cause it's awkward when you're sitting next to the person who's, you know, um, the, the other girl who's from Auburn she was cheering on her team. I was cheering on my team and I was like, this is really awkward. So I'm going to go <laughs> join the fans. So what, when you submitted your audition tape, was it the national anthem or did you sing something else? No, it was, it was the national anthem. I did, they I had me as a soprano. So I was lucky in a way that I was a soprano because they were, they needed a soprano from UVA. So what was it like just singing in front of that many people and like on, you know, millions of people on TV? Like yeah. how, do you, how do you compartmentalize that and focus and not be like super <laughs> nervous? Definitely. I won't lie. I don't think I've ever been in a stadium that big before. <laughs> I, I started walking down the stairs and they're like, yeah, you're going to stand right here and you're going to sing. I was like, I actually have a little bit of stage fright, and in all honesty, if I didn't have those three other student athletes there, I don't think I would have done it. <laughs> Not sure if I would have done it. So I drank, I was so, so nervous. I drank so many water bottles before. And then, you know, I, I, we did practice a bunch before. Like we went to a retirement home actually and performed um, for the elderly people there 
just because like, why not? You know, like it's a good way for us to practice and then a little community service on the side. So, um, definitely was super, super nervous. I don't know how I did it. And then at the end of it, I ran straight for the bathroom because I drank so much water bottles before I was like, Oh my God, I can't do this. I'm so nervous. I can't believe I just did that. <laughs> well, you did a great job. I mean, I had chills. Like I actually, I think I teared up actually like watching you sing. Oh. Like, <laughs> the photo. So wow. super proud. Um, Thank really you. Fun. They were cool. really banking on our musical talents for sure. Oh, that was, um, you ever going to do it at JPJ? Come on. I don't know. I mean, I guess I could. I haven't been asked. <laughs> Maybe we can pull some strings. I've got a few. Maybe. <laughs> All right. What about, okay. I know, I mean, you've got this, you've got this, uh, singing on your resume. Uh, and there's a, Juwan Briggs has some, uh, some, some street cred. Wow. Well, too. Have you guys ever teamed up or thought collaborated? about collaborating? Maybe we have, yeah. we have, and you actually have the content already. Um, we did it for the Who's Choice Awards, but of course, we never had the opportunity to go to and do it, basically. But someone had the idea to do this kind of like game, song association. I don't know if you're familiar with that, um, in which they present us with a word and we have to sing a song with, uh, that contains the word or something like that. So I know we filmed that together and it was a lot of fun. So I would like to do it again. I know he had a lot of fun with it too. We probably do that again if you guys were interested, right. but yeah. I thought about, you know, putting you on the spot and not telling you and having him call in and then like, you know, just doing a name that tune and seeing like what you guys could come up with. Maybe, maybe, maybe we should do yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. Fun, uh, definitely. Um, like the sing-off or something with Ooh. <laughs> the wheels are turning. All right. Let's see. Let's, uh, let's see what we got next here. Um, let's see. Let's just talk about the teammates a little bit. Yeah. Who is the, who's the goofiest player on the team? That is so hard. I can't, it's so hard to get, say who's the goofiest. Cause I feel like we're all really goofy. We are a bunch of weirdos on this team and it's awesome. Um, the goofiest, I would have to say the goofiest person is, oh, this is so hard. Who is the goofiest person on our team? Maybe Grace. Grace could be really, really goofy sometimes. She says some pretty goofy things. I can't say that it's really, really, yeah, it's really hard to say who's the goofiest person. <laughs> I, I was going to vote Grace if I had to, if I had, yeah. to, <laughs> she was going to be my, my vote. I, I, I was just, I was just trying to find some photos. These, these are some pretty funny ones that, along with, but since you're talking yeah. about team, what do you say? Oh, no, go ahead. You got it. I was, uh, cause you missed photo day last year, right? You were, you weren't there for the, uh, the team day, right? So we mm -hmm. didn't get an actual team photo yeah. in it. So. Yeah. They went and it's so funny cause they went and they hung up that team photo and I was like, this isn't important. You should take it down. I'm not even in it. Yeah. I'm not a full team photo here. They were joking about photoshopping me in and I was like, come on guys, don't do this to me. <laughs> All right. Well, since you missed that one, we'll go back to your, we'll go back to the first year. Just kind of talk about, you were, you were talking about the team of, of goofballs and just, but it really is, a, there's so much uniqueness on the team and like so many talented people just off the court, you know, from artists to astrophysicists and whatever, and you know, right. your singing talent and just kind of talk about that whole, the beauty of team and the different, talents and that sort of thing definitely i definitely think that it brings such an amazing atmosphere and climate to our team and with so many people doing so many different things it also kind of just you know brings up this opportunity for us to kind of like be oh what are you doing like what are you doing type deal and then you know introducing different interests to our, each other basically so we have all these amazing conversations. Like Meg will come in and start talking about like, I don't know, black holes or something. And we will talk about black holes <laughs> before practice. And it's just, it's so fun. Um, 
to have those conversations. So it's definitely amazing. And we all support each other. So every time Sarah comes in with like a new painting or a new sculpture or something like that, we're all like, oh, we want to see it. Show us like your sculpture, show us your painting. Like it's an awesome, you know, support system that we have. And it's like, it just makes me feel like I can be successful and choose whatever path. And I know that I'll have a group of people behind me supporting me. So it's definitely awesome. Yeah, I talked to Sarah actually like for photo day this year. Like I was, I thought about giving her the white backdrop and letting her create some sort of UVA themed art that could be like Ooh, our yeah. for photo day. That could be kind of a cool something different. Yeah. Uh, so since since you missed photo day this year, you actually got to do your own, and I thought you actually probably got the best. <laughs> you got the best lighting of the whole the whole team you got you got the coolest yeah <laughs> you came in and you said let's experiment a little let's try some stuff and I was like let's do it I, I can't wait <laughs> yeah so here's a little behind the scenes of what it what it looked like before uh, before this so and then we came up with this and love it yeah it's one of my favorite Amazing. portraits from the year yeah you do do a lot of creative photos. I've seen a lot. And I was like, oh, that water backdrop, that's so cool. I was like, I'm jealous. That's so cool. I know if you could do that with a volleyball, but that's really cool. Yeah, so got any ideas for photo shoots for this year? Off the top of my head right now, probably yeah. not. <laughs> I can't wait to see what you come up with. All right, well, you be thinking too. So I, I, I'm going to need some ideas. All right. Sure. All right, I like this one. This is pretty intense too. I actually had Josie do my hair before because I was like, I'm totally unprepared. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Uh, but yeah, this was an awesome experience for sure. Most, the most creative I think I've ever been because the year before we took awesome like dog pile shoots and it, it was really cool. Well, yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to raise the bar this year for sure. For sure. All right, let's see. Let's, 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 uh, I think, I think we're about done here. I'm just going to have you, I have everybody talk just a little bit about the university and just um, kind of give your recruiting pitch. So, Ooh. recruiting pitch. Hmm. Help Smitty out here. Help, help, help the coaching staff out. Sure. Yeah, so if I had to give a recruiting pitch, I would just say that just kind of from my own experience, I've had such an amazing experience at UVA that, you know, from in terms of growth, like I have grown not only as a person, but as a player on the team, I have such an amazing team, as I've mentioned so many times before, of support and, you know, it's, it's just honestly amazing. So that was a terrible recruiting pitch. <laughs> that was honestly awful. I feel totally unprepared. <laughs> but from my own point of view, I absolutely love UVA and I'm so happy I made the decision to do so. So if any recruit has any questions, then I'd answer them. <laughs> love it. Tell me in just in, in closing, like what can we look for for UVA volleyball? This is, I know progress has been made like is this the year we turn the corner i think the talent is there right always oh, yes sir yes sir we have five amazing recruits coming in and we have you know kind of like i said we had the opportunity to kind of sit down evaluate plan and think about how we want to approach the year the upcoming year you know goals things that we want to do so definitely i'm very very excited for the fall super excited for the fall and what we have to offer. All right. Well, I look forward to getting out there. I hopefully we're back at Mim Gym. Uh, in a couple I'll get one, another one of your <laughs> pictures going through. All right. Well, unless you've got anything else, I think I'm 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 done here. I've got good content. I've got nothing else. Thank you so much for this Thank opportunity. You. Yeah. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate your time. So. And we'll definitely be in touch. For sure. Thank you very much. All right. Have a good day. You too. Bye.